Today on Euro Football Daily, we are looking at 10 players excelling in the wrong position. Shout out to Euro Expert on Twitter for helping us put this list together. 10. Rodrigo de Paul It is easy to write off Rodrigo de Paul as yet another attacking talent that lost his spark after joining Diego Simeone's Atletico Madrid. At Udinese, the Argentinian was one of the most creative players in Italy, scoring 25 and assisting 23 in his final three seasons in Serie A. This is the player lost Rocky Blanco's supporters were expecting when they shelled out 35 million euros to sign him last summer. However, for some reason Simeone is using the 27-year-old as a deep-lying midfielder with great defensive responsibility. DePaul might be putting up a career-high 3.5 tackles per 90, but he has just two goal involvements in La Liga. That said, he has received the sixth most minutes within the Atleti squad and is still producing around 51 carries a game and a massive 6.9 passes into the final third. The former Valencia man deserves credit for adapting to his new demands, but Simeone has been accused of trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. All the signs suggest his creative talent is ready to be unleashed, so let's hope Simeone can find that player next term. 9. Matteo Genduzzi After watching him at Arsenal, you would have thought Matteo Genduzzi would blossom into one of the most attacking players in Ligue 1. The Frenchman who is currently on loan from Marseille with the Gunners is playing some of his best football yet on the right-hand side of Lom's attack. The 23-year-old has scored three and assisted six this term from almost 2,800 minutes of action. But those numbers don't do his contribution justice, with Guendouzi ranking second for progressive carries and passes in the entirety of Ligue 1, and first for passes into the final third. According to expected build-up per 90, the former Hertha Berlin Loney is getting involved in the possession of every other goal Marseille are scoring this term. He even got on the score sheet in France's recent friendly win over South Africa, suggesting that Qatar could be on the cards for the resurgent young Frenchman. Ganduzi certainly looks right at home at the Stade Velodrome. Jorge Sampaoli's side have an obligation to make his loan permanent for around 11 million euros, which on current form looks like an absolute bargain. 8. Mauro Jr. PSV have a history of buying high-quality Brazilians, with the likes of Alex, Romario and the original Ronaldo all landing in Europe via a stay in Eindhoven. The next little canary using them as a stepping stone towards potential greatness is Mauro Jr., signed in 2017 from Desportivo Brasil. At 5'7", Jr. arrived as a tricky and skillful winger. Though his progression through the young PSV system was slow, six goals and a successful loan spells at Heracles El Melo in 2019-20, confirmed he was finally ready for a first-team spot at the Philips Stadion. Last season, Mauro Jr. was used as an attacking midfielder on either flank. However, Daniel Marlin, Eren Zahavi and Cody Gakpo formed the main thrust of PSV's attack, limiting the 22-year-old to 12 starts in the Eredivisie. However, this term, Mauro Jr. has found a home at left-back where he is thriving. Despite his size, the Brazilian's putting up an impressive 3.4 tackles and interceptions per 90. Combined with his attacking flair that has delivered two goals and two assists, and it's no surprise he's keeping the German international Philipp Max out of the starting 11. 7. Maxwell Cornet When Burnley signed Maxwell Cornet from Lyon last summer, it was expected that the Ivorian would add an element of flair to the Claret's functional attack. The 25-year-old is a fullback by trade, but often turned out as a flying winger in France. He scored 51 times in 252 appearances for Les Gons, including a smart finish against Man City in the 2019-20 Champions League quarter-final. However, few expected Cornet to become a striker at Turf Moor. With Ashley Barnes and Matej Vidra suffering injuries early on, Cornet was partnered with Chris Wood in attack, and responded by scoring five goals by the turn of the year, including a double away to Southampton. The numbers show the change in Cornet's game. His key passes, carries and crosses have all dramatically fallen from last season, and his tackles plummeted from 2.9 per 90 to just one. But his shots have almost tripled to 2.4, along with his touches in the opposition penalty area. His little and large combination with Wout Weghorst has all the foundations of a deadly partnership rarely seen at Burnley. Likeable and exciting, should they fail to beat the drop, Cornet will surely not be joining them in the championship. 6. Juan Foyth when Juan Foyth left Tottenham for Villarreal, he probably never imagined that he would become a Europa League winner and Champions League semi-finalist in the next two years. Yet that is exactly what the Yellow Submarine have achieved under the cup competition genius that is Unai Emery. What is intriguing about Foyth is that his newfound success has come at right back, not in his traditional role at centre-half. Unsurprisingly, the Argentine is not a massive threat. 
completing around a dribble a match and a key pass every other game to register just one assist in La Liga all season. But what the 24-year-old has proven is that he is an incredibly solid and reliable defender. Foyth is completing a massive 4.9 tackles and interceptions per 90, along with two blocks and six pressures a game. A 60% tackle success rate against opposition dribblers is further proof that the former Spurs man has become incredibly hard to get the better of. Given Villarreal's other right-back is the erratic Serge Aurier, Foyth is a responsible pair of hands. Their remarkable Champions League journey has been built off a rock-solid defence, so Foyth should have a huge role to play if they are going to reach the final. 5. Florian Grilic Hoffenheim star Florian Grilic has burst into the public conscience thanks to his looming free agent status. Last season it was reported that AC Milan and Napoli were interested in the 33-cat Austrian international, and now clubs from the Premier League have arrived on the scene. Arsenal, Leeds and Newcastle all want him, hardly surprising given Grilic is equally adept in central midfield or at centre-half, where he has been playing this season. The 26-year-old has been putting up some huge defensive numbers for Hoffenheim. In their squad, only Diadi Samiseku betters his 4.9 tackles interceptions per 90, while he is winning two aerials and completing a solid 36% of his pressures. His experience as a midfielder is also shining through, with a massive 90% pass completion rate, the ninth highest in the Bundesliga. Previously, Grilic has been compared to Marcelo Brozovic due to his playmaking ability from deep. Though he is not quite on the Croatian's level, his versatility and quality at centre-half means he will be a valuable asset to whoever can get hold of him. 4. Joe Linton You all know the story of Joe Linton by now. Once the laughing stock of the Premier League thanks to a hapless return of 8 goals in 98 appearances, the Brazilian has successfully reinvented himself from a misfiring forward into a tenacious central midfielder. The stats behind his transformation are truly remarkable. In Steve Bruce's system, Joe Linton's work rate was never in doubt, with the former Hoffenheim man regularly hustling hard in his isolated roll up front. For all his hapless luck in front of goal, he averaged 3 tackles and interceptions per 90, plus attempted 18 pressures a game last season. This time he has taken that defensive effort to a whole new level though. Prior to the Magpies' recent win over Crystal Palace, Joe Linton ranked first in the Newcastle squad for touches, tackles won, possession won and duels won. In fact, he ranks 10th in the entire Premier League for pressures this season, on the coattails of Christian Norgar, pierre Mill Hoiberg and Everton Zalan. Joe Linton now looks set to stay in his new home of central midfield, remain an important part of Newcastle's revolution over the next few years, and he might just be worth that £40 million after all. 3. Carl Walker-Peters In the summer, Carl Walker-Peters faced a conundrum. Southampton had just bought the hugely talented Tino Livramento to provide competition at right-back and purchased Roman Perot from Brest for £11 million to replace Ryan Bertrand. Once Livramento started the first five games of the season, it became clear Walker-Peters would have to adapt if he wanted to earn minutes, which he did by shifting over to left-back. This was unfamiliar territory. But fast forward six months and the former Spurs man of Southampton's undisputed first choice in the position. His defensive numbers have stayed solid on three tackles and interceptions per 90, along with 1.3 clearances. But it's his offensive output that has really shone this term, with his dribbles, key passes and shots per match all reaching career highs. One goal and two assists might not sound like a lot, but 0.2 expected assists per 90 suggests he is unlucky to not be on more. Alongside James Ward-Price, the 25-year-old is one of Southampton's most important players. He has been so impressive, Gareth Southgate called him up to his latest England squad, meaning that a shot at a World Cup spot may genuinely be on the cards. 2. Henrik Mkhitaryan When Jose Mourinho arrived at Roma this summer, it remained to be seen whether he could patch up his relationship with Henrik Mkhitaryan. The Armenian had flopped under Mourinho at Man United, with the player publicly admitting that he had found it difficult to please the special one. Earlier on this season, Mkhitaryan revealed the pair had left their differences in the past, and the healing process has clearly worked, with the 33-year-old continuing to shine for the Jalarossi. What's interesting about the former Dortmund man, however, is that while last year he was an out-and-out -out attacker, scoring 13 in Serie A, this time he has become what is known in Italy as a mezzala. Translated as half-winger in English, Mkhitaryan has often played in the midfield behind the front three of Zaniolo, Abraham and Pellegrini, providing wits when necessary, but mainly shuffling between defence and attack. His goal-scoring threat has decreased on four for the campaign, but his pass accuracy and long balls have soared, with Mkhitaryan now conducting play from deep. He's been so impressive that there are talks that they'll extend his contract to the Stadio Olimpico, meaning we could see Mkhitaryan in the Metzala for a few more years to come. 1. Sadio Mane is there any attacking role Sadio Mane can't play? 
The Senegalese star cut his teeth in the Premier League as a second striker to Graziano Pelle at Southampton. Then at Liverpool, he started on the right wing before moving to the left to accommodate Mo Salah. And this season, with the competition higher than ever thanks to the success of Diogo Jota and the addition of Luis Diaz, Mane has reinvented himself once more as a false nine. Lately, the 30-year-old has found himself at the centre of the Reds' attack. According to Who Scored, he has scored seven in eight starts as a false nine, contributing to his tally of 14 goals in the league. Mane has been excellent at dropping deep to find space and collecting the ball before connecting with the wingers. Against West Ham in March, he touched the ball 75 times and created two chances for his teammates. Then against Man United, he went one better, taking two shots, scoring one, and completing 91% of his passes as they destroyed the Red Devils. The result is Mane may have discovered yet another excuse for Liverpool to extend his contract before it expires next summer. Jurgen Klopp would be silly not to. So guys, that was 10 players playing the wrong position this season. What did you guys think of the rundown? Let me know in the comments down below. As you can tell, the writer Henry Hill, unlike me, believes that Sadio Mane should have his contract extended at Anfield. Whose side are you on? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to EuroFootball Daily with notifications turned on, and I'll catch you next week.